biggest question across the world right now is this. Will the situation go from bad to worse in West Asia? Iran has already retaliated. The missile attacks on Iraqi bases hosting American personnel is Iran's revenge for the killing of Qasem Soleimani. Experts say that this was aimed at satisfying the domestic audience in Tehran. But is that really so? Will the missile attacks ratchet up tensions or will both sides claim victory and end this conflict? On We On Edit, we assess these questions. First, let's take a look at today's events from the perspective of the two central players in this conflict, Iran and the US. Iran's supreme leader has used dangerous language, calling this a slap on the face of the United States, but also saying such military actions are not enough. Iran's strikes were highly symbolic. They happened around the same time as Soleimani's killing on Friday. That's 1.30 a.m. Like Donald Trump, many Iranian officials tweeted images of the national flag and Iranian media has been hailing the strikes. But there is no clarity on the casualties. Upon closer look, it is clear that Iran targeted bases that were on high alert. The foreign minister of Iran says that the strikes were in self-defense and within the boundaries of international law. The statements are extremely significant. Now let's look at the response of US President Donald Trump so far. He is expected to speak in a while from now. After the attacks, Donald Trump tweeted, all is well, quote unquote, so far so good. He also highlighted America's military might. Trump's response is also crucial. The all is well comment does not mean that the US will not attack Iran if provoked further. Right now, there is chance for both the parties to de-escalate the conflict. This is the best case scenario. But will the US take that chance? And will Iran refrain from further attacks? These are the important questions, but it's unwise to look for clear answers at this juncture. There are many reasons for this lack of clarity. First, Iran did not show any regard for Iraq's sovereignty. This could be a sign of things to come. Iran runs many proxy wars in the region outside the range of U.S. counter-strikes. The Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas in Gaza. Iran could initiate conflicts in these regions simultaneously. Reason number two is that Iran can continue with its typical dangerous tactics like rocket strikes on oil facilities and, cy and cyber warfare. And three, if U.S. President Donald Trump is unpredictable, then Iran's supreme commander, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, wants more revenge. Iraq, of course, is another player here. The entire discourse is on Soleimani's killing, but the deputy commander of Iran's proxy militia in Iraq, Abu Mehdi al mohandis was also killed in the U.S. airstrikes, remember. And such proxy militias seem intent on further revenge. Expect Donald Trump to retaliate strongly to any such attacks. This is the worst case scenario. While most countries have urged both the countries to calm down, the chances of a full-blown conflict remain at large. Israel, for that matter, has given its complete backing to the United States. Prime Minister Netanyahu has warned of severe action against anyone who attacks Israel. This is a pointed jibe at Iran, which is, of course, Israel's regional rival. The next few days will be extremely crucial for West Asia. Donald Trump is unlikely to take any further attack from Iran lying down. Both the sides have an option now to de-escalate. But the rhetoric from Tehran is worrisome for regional peace, global peace and the global economy.